There are two things that I would say. First of all, the beer is usually better value than the wine. You can find a lot of cheap wine in France, but it's usually pretty dodgy if you get it off your ordinary French supermarket. Look at the head he's got on his. Anyway, um, uh, and this is this is a French beer. <laughs> it's disgusting. What is it? Mm. It tastes Jean like that stuff you put in catalyst to try to get rid of the smell. <laughs> <laughs> This is one of the few dry ones. She wants that as well. You want some of that as well? Yes. Okay, well, I, do. I don't really mind. I mean, I didn't want any anyway. Uh, oh, that's lovely. Think that. of that with fish. Nice. Yeah. That is good. Isn't that good? Isn't oh, Lily, I think you're I wonderful. I strongly recommend this. What's Great. It called? It's called cello. It's How a dry in your bed. Um, not too much, but five. 99? No, not a bit. Oh, I'm not bit, paying bit, five for well. <laughs> Sorry. Not while there's blue none in the shops. No way. No way. Five minutes. I have a bottle of wine. I may not be able to drink that five minutes. It wouldn't last us a bit. I've got an eight. Have another one, can't you?
four. It's very nice, though. <laughs> Portuguese red from the Alentejo, which is basically the subtle heart of Portugal before you get to the Algarve. Mm -hmm. Alentejo and... <laughs> <laughs> Good Rioja or a Navarra or a Penny. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Hello, Chichonia. I like to think the best thing about it is, oh, but I think there may be some of you out there who may be listening to what I'm saying. Oh, Nobody here is. Happy <laughs> Krasnia. Okay. Oh, have you, have you tried your glasses? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Okay. Right. right. This is a Navarro. Judy Renegade, you've got nice me rock and drunk. I'm <laughs> 10 o'clock in the morning on live television. I don't know. Not against you. you it's their fault. All right, there, la. Oh, to Paul O'Grady, to Lily Savage, vive le Birkenhead. Even, even takes um, this morning to another level. Yeah, yeah, um, no, no be there this week, um, because, you know, we wanted to dedicate the start of the show to the lovely Paul O'Grady, who's such a huge influence, isn't he? To oh, us? In, in my life, definitely. I um I was up early this morning because I've been coaching. So I was up at uh, I was up before seven, and I found out on on the news and stuff. Then I had to coach, and then when I went downstairs it was about half nine, and Alan was about, and um, I and said I, to Alan, "Oh, have you heard about Paul O'Grady?" I hadn't. Thinking he had, and he hadn't, and he just you stopped still, didn't you? you just yeah, stopped, I didn't. Well, I don't do any still. any TV or radio or social media. Until I had a last cup of tea and got myself got me in gear, but I was I was I was shocked. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I, so I know he's, he's had a past of history of um, bad health, but still, when they go, it's just oh no, not yet. Oh yeah, so lots of love coming in for Paul Grady, but let's see who's here. Let's have a little roll call. So um, through the doors, first off was the lovely BG Bear with his blue spanner. With his blue spanner, so he takes care of any. Um, Mischief makers, uh, followed by Tracy Thirty. Tracy Thirty. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Tracy. Happy birthday, Chuck. Who's most probably not Tracy Thirty? Maybe she's Tracy Thirty Two, Thirty Four. Tracy Twenty One. I don't know. Uh, so happy birthday for yesterday. And Tracy, how amazing, gorgeous is this? On her birthday, sent us a tip. Tracy. To celebrate her birthday. And she never forgets our birthdays. I oh, know. So th thank you, Tracy, for that. And happy birthday. I hope you have a fabulous day. Um, so that was yesterday, Tracy's uh, Tracy 30's birthday. Uh, followed by um, Nibbles and Bubbles, Hello Shari, uh, and then Will Venus. Will Venus. She's got it. <laughs> Oh, Will Venus. Now, Will Venus is um, is upset by Paul as well because Will Venus went to see Annie on maybe last Thursday. Yeah, just, just last Thursday. Starring week. Paul O'Grady. So Will saw, yeah, Paul O'Grady's Miss Hannigan. And um, it's uh, in Will's podcast. Um, they talk all about that experience and Miss Hannigan and Paul O'Grady's performance. Um, so yeah, Will is Will shattered by the news too. Uh, Mad Aberfan came in and said hello, darlings. Followed by Joel Hazeldean, the lovely Joel Hazeldean, um, and Josh Spencer. Hi, Josh. Hello, darlings. Um, Chums fan one two four three came next. Then me versus we, uh, and then Kim Peterson. So that's oh, lovely. Hello, Kim and Yen. Hello, guys. Um, Mad Aberfan's on the lime and soda. It's, uh, they're a cheap date. Um, Linda LeHughes, my cousin Lucy, arrives <coughs> next. Um, and Scylla Black enters with a resounding surprise, surprise, Chucks. Um, who else have we got in here? Uh, Archie Diggins. Oh, Archie, Archie Diggins. Diggins. Uh, Pip, Shalom, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between. Gareth. Gareth is uh, in Porto, and Gareth is doing the ironing while watching us. Claire B80, BBQ, is in, closely followed by Darren B, trying to get us on the YouTube on French telly. Um, so maybe we'll be translated into French. Maybe we'll be oh. dubbed into French. Bonjour. Uh, like Starsky, uh, Ouch. Bonjour, les enfants. Bonjour, la famille Bramelé. We were talking about French, didn't we? We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute, won't we? Yeah, Pete Potofsky. Pete Potofsky, the lovely Pete Potofsky, uh, came in. So Pete and Sinner, that is... Um, who um, are our little Broadstairs spies, even though they live miles away from Broadstairs. Um, 
Yeah, click, keep hitting the thumbs up. Shari says, keep hitting the thumbs up. Keep hit, hitting that like. There's 60 odd of you in there and only 20 likes. So click that like. It's, it's like, it's like um, giving us like a boost for the night, isn't it? Uh, it is. It gives us a boost. And I think it just it gets us in front of more people. The and it more tells, likes it tells YouTube that we're, that we're liked. That people are enjoying it. That you're not just popping along and going again. Paul McFarlane comes in, bursts in with his capital letters. God bless Paul O'Grady, one of the best entertainers of his generation. R.I.P. to a legend. We agree with you. Paul's like our sort of like YouTube town crier, isn't he? <laughs> he is. Yay! 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 Scream Queen! Uh, so that is Felicia in Minnesota? Hello, Felicia. Minneapolis, Minnesota, somewhere beginning with N. Mississippi. Uh, who else have we got in? Dale Libertson. Dale, are you in the same room as Caroline? Are you in a different house than Caroline? Um, Dale put up a barn in their garden this weekend. Did you see the video of it? A barn? No. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, like in Seven... You won't know this. In Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, yeah. they build a barn. You know when communities oh, yeah, come yeah, together yeah. and build oh, a yeah, barn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bar they have a little party. Yeah, there's them, a little but... video of them putting a barn in I know in Caroline the was making chocolate bark. Mm -hmm. Most probably for the barn. Uh... Uh, who else have we got? Chris Corson from Alabama. Corson. <laughs> Hello, Chris from Alabama. Hello, Chris Corson from Alabama. Uh, Coral Daft is in. Hello, Coral. Hello, Coral. Thank you, Coral, for your tip at the weekend as well. And thank you for our little Get Well card that we got, oh, we got today. Yeah. Thank you so much. Get Well to us and little Peggy down on the floor there. Um, Scream Keen is peeking in from her desk. And hoping it's slow for the afternoon so I she can watch us. I love the fact that people are at work trying to sort of sneak yeah. us into their lives for a bit. Josh Sadler. Josh Sadler came in. Josh Sadler seems to have, like, Silla's purse. So Josh Sadler, not Silla's, oh, yeah, the yeah. opposite of Silla's purse. So Josh Sadler might be buying drinks. So um, orders into Josh. Uh, David is in. That's my dad. So my mum is there as well. Hello to both of you. Um... Scylla Black uh, says that POG, Paul O'Grady, is up in heaven with her. And the first thing he said to her was, Oh, Syl, you look terrible. Now I'm here. Let's put on a production of Prisoner Cell Block H, the musical. Um, Helen is in. That's Helen from all. Yeah, Helen. Helen, who... I don't know where she, whether she might have left the the, uh, the chat the other week. But she sort of left us with saying she was a, a part-time dinner lady. <laughs> yeah, she was standing in for a dinner lady, I think, at her school. We love the fact we've got a dinner lady amongst our crowd. I know she's a radio presenter as well. But a dinner lady as well, to boot. D'Angela. D'Angela here. That is Hello, Mil Diangela. Mrs. McFarlane. Uh, who else have we got in? Uh, David Moore. I think I've said your name already. I might have not, but David Moore's here. Um, anyone else? Anyone else? NP? Uh, we MP I've just there. missed a load and I've just seen that. Uh, right, I'm going back because it's all just zoomed past me. Um, First Age Comics is in. Hello, First Age Comics. That's the lovely Lucy in Lancaster with um, her shop of all kitschy, kitschy, sci-fi superhero wonders. Um, uh, Robbie Hampstead, Andrew Chapman... Um, might be in later, but popped in. Out and about with David is here. Um, here she is, is in. Oh, here she is. Here she is. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Here she is. Might have dyed her beard, but here she has reached the ripe old age of 54. This week. Oh, she's not that old, surely. I know, I was shocked she's that old. Oh, I'm, sh I'm <laughs> she's, generally shocked. She's a plum mid-50s girl. Oh, you're looking good, darling. Um, so, happy birthday to here she is. Alex Johnson is here. Just got in from Liverpool. Paul's giant image still hangs over the Empire advertising Annie. It's very sad. Ross Morgan is in. Uh, Ross Morgan asks, how are we tonight? We're all right, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, well, we've still got a little bit of, like, um, aftermath of the COVID-19. Yeah, so we, if we start coughing, it sounds like we've, we're on 20 a day. Um, we've got real... <coughs> Chester coughs, and I'm talking a lot because I'm working mm. a lot at the moment. So um, my voice is a bit croaky. So I'm a little bit Phyllis Pierce. A bit Pierce. Phyllis Pierce, aren't we? <laughs> David Junior Jones is here. Simon B is joining us from the Double Tree in Swindon tonight. Oh, oh, very, very posh. posh. <laughs> uh, anyone else in? James Nichols. Hello. First time I've caught a live show. Hello, James. Welcome. Chit chat away in the. You've caught the, a live um, one, darling. 
Chit chat away in the comments. Everyone is absolutely lovely. Kim Farr says, hello, folks. I'm sorry I've been missing for so long. It's good to be back. It is. Welcome um, back. Caroline and Dale are on the same settee tonight, which is good to know. Um, lots of orders coming in for Josh at the bar. Uh, anyone else that I've just missed? Oh, Linda, Linda Lee having taboo and black. Is she? We're, we're classy in the Honeybourne family. Uh, <laughs> Coral Duff's on the jam shed. Um, no surprise there. Um, lots of love for Here She Is. Lots of happy birthdays out to Here She Is. Uh, out and about with David says Alan has got the best shirt on today. Well, I wanted to sort of be, um, you know, bright and lively in honour of Paul. Um, you know, and you're quite, you're quite colourful today. I'm quite colourful as well. I've got a, Hieron in a, a Hieronymus sense. Bosch on. I'm in sort of a Hawaiian. Scylla Black is. Um, Scylla Black is greeting these newcomers. So James is new. So Scylla's greeting with, tell me, James, what's your name and where'd you come from? <laughs> uh, Robbie Hampstead wants to know, can Alan do an impression of Ina Sharples? Um, you can look like her, can't you? But I don't know what her voice is like. It's quite posh, isn't it? Well, I tell you, but that's not going to I wouldn't want you much. And I'll tell you, my wouldn't want you much. And I'll tell you, my wouldn't want you much. And Over in Alan's uh, side of the room. The, so let's have a look who's over there. Sarah Simpson, our lovely friend Sarah, um, asking how we're both keeping and how is Peggy. She's walking around somewhere. She's all right. She's, she's walking a lot more. She's, she's walking not, a lot better. She's not hopping as much, but she's still got a limp. If she has a rest on her leg, then gets up to walk, then she's limping. Yeah. And then the foot comes down and she starts walking properly. So she's so on the, about another week yet. She's on anti-inflammatories that she has so, in, um, in cheese spread. If she's still doing a limp on Monday night, then... She might get operated she on. She might get operated on. But she started using the little steps that we got her. Yeah, she's realised that they're for her, not just for a large, <laughs> not some a large assault ornament. Course. Not some Krypton factor that we're trying to send her on. Yeah. Who else have we got in uh, there? Lovely Jill Barron afterwards. Says, I hope we're all well and have, have had a good week. Lovely Ryan. Um, and he's in the snub tonight. Ah, so Ryan, a.k.a. Hugh Bonnet, when he's over in yeah, YouTube. Yeah, he's popped in and his, and his little um, avatar picture looks lovely, isn't it? Is it Princess Margaret? I think it might be Her Madge the Queen. No, I think it's Margaret. That's not the Queen. Let us know, Ryan. Who's your little picture? I think of? it's Princess Margaret. Uh, uh, followed by lovely Martin Garden Spence. And um, now Neil's at rehearsals tonight. Neil, Neil Sarah, Sandwell. Uh, as per Wednesday. But we're joined by the lovely Lady V and Lord Henry. <laughs> I, I worry that Lady V lives a, a life a bit like... Um, Julia Roberts in Sleeping with the Enemy because she doesn't seem to have her own Facebook account. She has to log on Neil's. Does Neil make you put tins the right way around and neaten the little tea towels? I, I very much doubt that. You let me know and I'll peel you an orange on a bus. She might just not want to be on Facebook. No, what's it? Uh, an old woman peels her an apple on a bus, I think. I'll peel mm. you an apple on a bus. Um, so with those two beauties in, followed by a lovely Fiji. Hey, Fiji. <laughs> do, do, do. Followed by my good friend <coughs> Keith Wellens. <coughs> now Alex the Welsh boys Nicky. are out tonight. They're off to see Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At the um, cinema, starring mm. Dench and Saunders. Yeah, Dench and Saunders. It does. <coughs> I love the advert for that, and I love the song that they keep playing. Da, 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 yeah, I hope da, it's good. Da, 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 Do you think it'll be good? Da, oh, yeah. Yeah. And I think... Um, I've been let down by a few Alan Bennett plays. No, this one looks like... Well, he, he sort of hasn't really written it. It's this... Um, wonderful writers were in it with him. I think it had Selena Cadell in at um, the National. And uh, Judy. Do you, know, do you know who Selena Cadell is? No. You Judy... would know Selena Cadell. Simon Cadell's sister. Oh, yeah, that one was sort of. If I find a picture of her, you'd know oh, yeah. exactly I, I who know she, she is, is now. Um, and Judy apparently is really, really pleased she's in a York, uh, Yorkshire Northern film. Because oh. she, she was born in York, you know. <coughs> yeah, she's, is she York? She was born in York, yeah. Oh, good. Uh, followed by the lovely Bethan Williams. From New South Wales, Australia. From Wales. From Wales. And then we've got Filippo Guacimo Bracchia. You can say it so well. Filippo Giacomo Bracchia Forte. It's like that Welsh village, isn't it? The Kakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakak
Lovely Darren Bramley, and I think Mrs. Bramley as well. So Darren didn't get the Rebecca. YouTube telly working, so the French tellies failed them with YouTube, so they've come over to the snug. Um, followed by lovely... Oh, Drew Valentine. That's a lovely name, isn't it? Drew Valentine. Oh, we know Drew, don't we? Yeah, from Florida. Yeah, Drew Valentine. Uh, followed by Marcia Maudley. And my brother Ewan. It's it's her, at him indoors. Uh, who are Tom you? Tom Clues. Tom Clues. He's in a little circle of green there, isn't he? Like a little, little wreath. Nigel TC on his uh, solo. Oh, and Neil is out. Neil is out, out tonight. Boot. Jason Brett. Jason and James. Oh, and James from Worthing. From Worthing. So that's um, one of my delicious Eurovision twins and his lovely husband. So that's a little story for later. <laughs> like I own them. <laughs> oh, Darren Bramley says um, he had the fortune of working on the rain when Paula Grady was in. And he was always so nice to everyone when he came in. And afterwards, made a point of saying thank you to all the techies when he left. Oh, you see, that's good. that's true, the true pro, uh, true pros, professional. You know, thanking the people who put him out there. I read today that when Paul O'Grady had his Channel Four show, maybe Channel Five show. No, he was on Channel Four, wasn't he? An early evening kind of chat show. Yeah. He made sure that every job to work on it was advertised at the job centre because mm. he wanted to give people a break, like he had had back in the day. Lovely man, isn't he? And he worked in care. Did you know Oh, that? yes. Yeah. She was a care nurse, Yeah, actually, if a family needed, like, if mum had to go to hospital to have a baby, instead of sending all the five kids out, he'd go and live with the kids. Oh, and look after them. Yeah, but he said um, he used to have trouble with, like, um, fellas turning up middle of the night thinking he was the woman's oh, wow. side. And he's having a, he said he was having, having a fight with a baby in his arm. <laughs> Get out. Um, Cole Taylor has popped in. Um... You remember seeing um, Paul Straight Lily in Prisoner in the 90s? I remember him seeing him in Prisoner, Sublock Catch the Musical, with Joan Ferguson in it, mm. Maggie Kirkpatrick, and A. Nolan. I don't remember oh. which Nolan. Like one of the lesser Nolans. Do you think if, if the Nolans are in a play, the rest are backstage as understudies? <laughs> and just send one of them on? No, this was like, this was like the, you know, the understudy, understudy Nolan. The one who'd not been a loose woman. Mm. Maureen is there a Nolan called Maureen it might have been her the lesser the lesser else? spotted Maureen uh, uh, we've, I think Paul's popped in Paul so. pops in and Paul's quiet he's <laughs> using lower capitals lower, <laughs> lower case there Paul speaks in the snug in in, in um, lower case and then in the uh, in the bar he speaks in loud capital letters anyone else anyone else uh, Joel, Joel William Hazeldean's popped in say hello is he normally there? Ryan says it is Princess Margaret, his picture. Um, Filippo Giacomo Bracciaforte is getting physio for his knackered leg. I think she's down there now, if you can see her. I think she might be um, licking her downstairs, though. No, there she is. She's a bit whimpery tonight. She is, she's trying to look for, to get settled. And uh, Gabby and Debbie Coxhill are in as well. Oh, it's one of the not like um, somewhere exotic. They've been very busy recently, which is why they've not been in much. Is that radiator on for her? It is on. Um, Angela Larson has arrived. So, Angela Larson, welcome. Um, anyone else that I've missed? I'm sorry I've missed because I've been over looking at that side. Um, but we're delighted to have everyone in tonight. Um, so, what are your Paul O'Grady kind of memories? So, I remember Lily Savage from when I was, I guess, about... 15 most mm. probably and she started appearing and it was like late night kind of telly like comedy shows yeah. late night i remember having videos of her stand-up shows did mm. you yeah i remember my, my parent my parents loved the odd drag queen i mean I remember mum loving divine um and they they both loved um lily savage because um she was a sort of drag queen that just you just accepted her straight away didn't you well, I think it, you, know. you know that's what drag should be. It's like political. It's funny. It's naughty. It's filthy. And I remember him saying some, I think somewhere that um, when he when he wanted to become a drag queen, he didn't want to be like one of the matronly ones, like um, Les uh, Les. Um, what's her name? Dame Edna. Um, he wanted to sort of be, you know, have a bit of colour to him. But I remember the, so I had a video of him doing a live show where Wright said Fred was sat in the audience. I don't know why I remember that. And I, there was another one which was a like bigger budget and I had Bob Down in it. So I remember those two VHSs that I like played to death. And then of course when I, when I was kind of a young adult, 
Lily was on the big breakfast every morning oh, yes, on the bed. It's almost like here she is, sort of laying mm. on the bed interviewing people. And um, yeah, just such a big old part of my a life. A natural um, interviewer as well, wasn't she? Yeah, I mean, just like there was no difference between Lily and Paul, really, was that as no. the interviews go. Lily just got away with a few more dirty jokes, I guess. But she was very natural as in the fact, you know, she, was, she either did an act on stage, which obviously was pre-planned and rehearsed, but also when she was just a, an interviewer, she was just, again, a natural yeah. character, just to sort of sit there. and The lovely Spencer Carter was talking about her and talking about just how good she was with working an audience and getting the best out of people. Mm. Uh, S.G. Turner, there is a Maureen Nolan. She appeared at Stafford Gatehouse in the Panto and was billed as the legendary Nolan sister, singular. <laughs> so she's one of the singers, is she? <coughs> she's one of the five Nolans. Okay. Uh, BG Bear says Linda was always his favourite Nolan and uh, young Mike Nolan from Bucks Fizz no I don't think he's a relation but, but, you know. um, Stephen, Th- Stephen or Steve H31 says Lily Savage's big break was the bill where she played a, oh, a, a I, I saw a picture called Roxanne, of that today on the internet um, and of course he was, he, he was always at the Vauxhall Tavern kind of when, when we were young Young yeah. London gays, wasn't he? Well, I thought I'd seen him in a, in a local um, uh, pub in Lewisham, but I, I, I think I was wrong. I don't think he came to, to that one. He might have been a looky likey. <laughs> you most probably would have done. I remember seeing a Scouse um, drag queen and thinking she was amazing. So it could, it could have been him. Pete Petofsky remembers Lily Savage doing the Queen Mum by taking a wig off on Blackpool Pier with Sonia in 1996. Simon B, when she got drunk on this morning with Richard and Judy, which is what we played just earlier, um, a lot just slipped by on this side. Can you having a look on that side? So you've got. I will, yeah. Uh, Jay Shorten, I've gave um, the, the Nan a Lily Savage video. My family weren't impressed. Um, Bob Down and Lily did the Bolero, which Nan enjoyed. Yeah, that's that other bigger budget video, I remember. Um, Lily Savage is the epitome of my favourite kind of drag, says Will Venus. We're massively um, influenced by Lily for our, our drag as well. It's naughty, it's mm. a little bit glam, Lepa but not print. too glam. Um, Linda Lee Hughes, I loved him on Christmas Day on Radio 2. It felt like you had a friend round. He pretended to hate Christmas, but was so funny and warm. Mm. BG Bear says it was Lily Savage's Paying the Rent tour. Yeah. Uh, Josh Spencer um, Josh is so Josh is younger I think Josh is in his 20s so Josh says Lily Savage and Dame Edna will for me always be the OGs I love that British style of drag I don't like this drag race Americanized cr- clinical drag Robbie Hansted remembers Lily with Zig and Zag S.G. Turner Lily was outrageous but I completely recognise her and her working class realism from the w- women around me um uh, Cole Turner says, he remembers Lily uh, Sorry. appearing in Brookside. Um, her and Lloyd Grossman opened Barry Grant's restaurant. <laughs> Let's have a look up here. Any others going up here? Uh, the Coxhills are downsizing. Coxhill mm. Towers, which is why they've been very busy. Um, Martin Garten Spence. I think Lily was the first real mainstream drag queen since Danny LaRue, which is quite an accomplishment. Yeah, I think so. Danny LaRue, Dame Edna... Lily, but Lily, I guess for what I was reading today on Twitter and stuff was a lot of younger people saying how powerful it was for them, grown up gay, kind of teenage, and having Paul O'Grady kind of on tea time TV and being totally accepted for being mm. quite, quite a camp gay man. Yeah. Uh, here we go. What's this? Martin Garton Spence. I love the Victoria Wood joke about the Nolans on Dinner Ladies. That poor woman, Mrs. Nolan. I suppose she must have been giving birth for years before she got any decent harmonies going. <laughs> five, five outfits, all, all the same. Darren Bramley wonders, what was the name of Lily's original dog? Oh, it I remember Buster, it Buster was, but that wasn't was it, original was it, was it a white poodle? Was it a poodle? I think it was. Or was it sort of like a little... Mongrel? I'm not sure. Anyone know <clears throat> Lily Savage's dogs? What were their names? Um, of course, that's another thing we have to champion him for as well. His love of dogs. Oh yeah. Oh, I mean, I used to, I used to love that program. But I used to be in fits of tears. I can't watch it because I get I get too upset with programs about dogs. But he was a sort. You know, you get these celebrities that go and do a, like a dog dog 
um, program, and they're like, "Oh, little dog," and I'm like, "But he'd be like there, and they'd be licking, his, they'd be licking his face, and he he didn't care. He's like me." Martin Garten Spence wonders if was it Olga? Was his dog called Olga? It might have been. Um, his mate was called Vera, wasn't she? Yes, yeah, yeah. Michael Vera. Uh, Alex Johnson, remember when Paul did that show where he travelled around the States? I remember yeah. him being sloshed in Texas, ranting and raving, rolling on the floor, drunk or sober. The Yanks just couldn't understand him. Yeah, and he had his producer with him, didn't he? And he gave his producer or the crew hell. I, I, like, the one, I like the one where he went around Shanghai and all that. Do you remember that one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Lots of, he did those travel shows, didn't he? I forgot about that. And then he did the um, Shanghai Lil uh, spoof. Yes, yeah, yeah, I did. I downloaded that and I was going to show you it. Um, but because it's BBC, I worried it would be taken off. Yeah. Um, but that's worth looking up. Shanghai Lil by Lily Savage. Because we, when we started dating, we were working at the Museum of the Moving Image. And in one of the places where we worked, they had like a roll, like a film on that was on a rolling loop. And it's used to show clips of classics like over, yeah, over and over in a loop. So every 20 minutes, the same kind of music would start again. And you'd, and they played the whole of Shanghai Lil from Easter uh, Parade? No. Um, Lullaby of Broadway? Lullaby of Broadway. What are the numbers? With Jimmy Cagney. And I oh, can't her remember name? her name. Ruby Shoes. Ruby Keeler. Ruby Keeler. Um, but we used to do like funny lyrics for da, it all da, and da, stuff. Da, 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 da. Um, but we know it inside out. So Lily Savage's Shanghai Lil's um, uh, lovely we, for we us We loved it, watch. didn't we, when you yeah. did that? Uh, Seven Network. I was fortunate to see Lily in the Prisoner Musical Tour and I met her in person at Granada Studios Treat in the Streets event in 1998. It was Olga. Linda LaHue says he liked dogs more than people. My kind of man. Uh, Tom Clue said it was called Queenie Whippet. Queenie Whippet. So Will Paul McFarlane says Olga was after Buster. So... Not sure. Someone someone out there has got the, the Paul O'Grady biography. Get flicking. Um, let's have a look. Buster, Buster Elvis Savage was the first dog. A Shih Tzu Bichon Freeze and Olga. There was another dog before Buster, I think, Josh. Back in Big Breakfast days. So we're going back to like 90. Darren says, us to it, know me. He was just down the road. Oh, yeah. we were. So we start, We work, I worked there in 97 and... 98 and you work there 96 to 99 96 to the millennium really uh martin garton spence says check out the dramatic recreation of lily's chip pan fire it's great stephanie beecham plays lily jane rossington plays vera and zoe ball plays bunty that's lily's daughter i think um but they all do it upper class (laughs) um and then who can forget Blankety Blank? Oh, yeah. I used to love him on that. And that, that's just been shown recently on uh, one of the, the cable um, channels. Um, all of Lily's Blankety Blank. Now, I missed this comment because it went scrolling past when we were talking about Paula Grady. But I think Sarah Simpson um, said that she had a news today that she'd lost her nan. Oh, now, Sarah. I'm going to scroll back and see if I can see it and check that I'm saying the right thing before we... Off your commiserations. There we go. Sarah Simpson. My mum got a phone call from my cousin saying my nan passed away early this morning. Oh. Sarah, we're sending you lots of love. Lots of love, Sarah. Lots of love to you. And your family. Darren Bramley was just down the road when me and Alan were courting. He was at the GMTV studio from 1997. Oh. Darren, we must have, like, I bet passed we were each the, other. Yeah, I bet we were having lunch at the BFI. Yeah, I bet we've um, we've brushed up against each other in a pack of mac Or around that book, book stall. I was forever <laughs> around there, flicking through... Uh... The book stall underneath, yeah. Um, lots to talk about all the variety of drag over in this side drag is great drag is five it's half past we're gonna have an advert break um but it's a little bit different so we'll see you on the other side of this and what we're going to be talking about to other side is um because it was world theater day we're going to be talking about everyone's experiences of being on stage uh, but we'll see you in about four minutes <laughs> Sometimes you're just not yourself. Old Laces is a blend of herbs, spring water and other nice bits and pieces that get you back to your old self. 
I'll tell you why my hands are so soft, because I never wash a dish. Now get out in that backyard and stop asking stupid questions. Go on, office. <laughs> Old laces. Open poor, they are whole once more. <laughs> In the 90s, everyone fell in love with Paul O'Grady's eight-foot-tall Scouse drag queen with her massive wigs and tight skirts, Lily Savage. Let's <laughs> <Lizanne>, sit down. <laughs> you can't see up my skirt, can you? That's an extra 50 quid, then get it down. I used to have to share the bed with our Vera. God bless her soul. She used to wet it. I was always grateful in the winter. At least she had a warm. <laughs> My mother used to say, what end of the bed do you want? I'll have the shallow end, please. <laughs> this tall, lanky, blonde woman, dressed in, in leopard skin, could get away with murder, and she did. Apparently, Kilroy does not want working-class people on his show. Well, all I can say is he would shit if he was in here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the smell of poverty wafting over the... <laughs> I've never seen such poverty-stricken bastards in my life <laughs> My brother as well, our Archie. I hate him. In fact, the only reason I speak to him is because you never know you might need a kidney. Well, it's true, isn't it? Sadly, Lily retired in the early noughties. Apparently, she saw the light, found God, and packed herself off to a convent in France. Bonsoir, madame et monsieur, et mon ami et mes enfants. Je m'appelle Lily and May, Veronica Savage, and sur le stage de l'Erne in Edinburgh. Au revoir, Lily. So we wait till then, eh? Hi. I want to introduce you to Flame of Landudno Stay Put Lipstick. One application and it stays put for the rest of your life. Let's consult the experts. <laughs> I was the makeup artist on Avita and I wish I'd had about that Stay Put Lipstick because that Madonna's a messy car. Come here, my darling. Let's have a look. Ooh, you look lovely today. Stay Put Lipstick. I can touch it. I can drink as much as I like. <coughs> and I can even kiss and not leave those telltale signs. Stay put lipstick, guaranteed to stay on. Well, your face. I love you. Paula Grady. There we go. Oh. To Paul. Uh, Squeam Queen uh, popped in and said she heard, pray tell, <laughs> was there a musical about, was there a play about prisoner sublocates that Lily Savage was in? It was a musical, um, Squeam Queen. So it's even better than a play. It had song and, song and dance. Um, Paul says Lily had a greyhound called Queenie and then Buster made his debut on The Big Breakfast as a puppy. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, Olga came afterwards. Um, so, yeah. Let's talk theatre. Theatre? So it was World Theatre Day, I think, on Monday. And that's a day to kind of remind governments and stuff of the power of theatre and that theatre is a valid kind of 
cultural aspect that you know can speak to people and help people experience feelings and help people with empathy and all of that stuff so we asked you what was your first experience of being on stage um should we tell them ours yeah so i mentioned these in i guess my first experience my first first experience was at nursery but you can't really call that stage mm. but i was in the nursery nativity and i played joseph but we're talking about three, age three, I think now. But I do remember it. But I remember saying to Mary, I think it was, I basically said either the baby shouldn't be called Jesus or she shouldn't be called Mary, but it should they should be called Miss Piggy. And um, the audience lapped it up. And I remember laughter and I remember liking the laughter. And I remember, I wonder if that's where I got this gig for kind of this, not gig, what's the word? Love this, love, this love for like showing off a little bit in front of an <clears> audience. Um, but my main, what I remember is um, when I was, oops, sorry, let me turn that off. When I was about eight, uh, nine, ten, I think, I was in a play at school. Um, so it was on stage and it was um, the Christmas play. And it was a sort of wacky nativity. And I played a little boy who got given a time machine for Christmas. And he used that time machine to go back to various moments of history. And um, he went back to witness the birth of Christ. <laughs> so that was my first uh, little starring role on stage. Yours? Well, mine was... Um, <clears throat> I did the nativities, but I'm not counting that. Because it wasn't, it wasn't, I wasn't cast. My nativity was... A spectacular well, yours parade. Would be. You must be had, um, must be a choreographer and everything. In a... We did for the uh, twelve days of Christmas, which again I went back in time to witness that. Um, we had um, uh, we we were allowed to do plays. Like so was... you got your parents to come and see. And no, no, like for for assembly. Okay, that sort of thing. Like if you if you if you had an idea for a play, you go to your teacher and say we want to put this on, and then should you know if it's any good, they'd let you do it. So these group of lads were doing this thing about an alien landing in, on Earth. And obviously they'd written it and put it together. And then um, I was a bit of a mousy kid. I didn't really sort of, I wasn't out there or uh, over the top. And they just approached me one day and said, will you be in our play? And I was like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, I'll do Aww. it. And uh, they'd chosen me because of my, my, my height. I was very small. And they said, well, you're going to be playing the alien. And I was like, oh, wow. And they said, because you're the only one who can fit in a dustbin. <laughs> so I didn't mind. So they dressed me up, painted me green with poster paint. And they made this little rocket out of a loo roll, which came down, came down on fishing wire. Down and landed, crash landed in the, the bin. And it had a little smoke bomb in the end of it. Did it really? Oh, this yeah. is very um, extravagant. It wasn't me. It was somebody else who had done all this. What age were you? <coughs> so it was junior school, so. Like between sort of eight, nine, ten? Yeah, sort of well, eight, eight or nine, I think. And then when it landed in the bin, I got out and did like gobbledygook talking. Oh, a little alien Alan. <coughs> but then you were in like Dracula Spectacular, weren't you? Oh, that's like years later. But that was sort of like, you got a bit of a, a bug, didn't you, to do stuff then? The Dracula Spectacular, so watch it tonight. Yeah, so um, within like a couple of days, I was like really popular. <laughs> oh, everyone wanted to know you. Oh, yeah. You're that funny little alien, aren't you? No one yes, I am. No one wanted to know the little boy who witnessed the birth of Christ. <laughs> Um, let's have a look. First time, Karen Avery. First time on stage was in elementary school. I... Oh, here she goes. I played one of the Cratchit children. My only line was, close the door, it's cold outside. Do you want, do you want to have a little cough? We can do this. I'm back. 
There we are. Sue Pollard to oh. the rescue. So, Karen Avery's first time in elementary school was one of the Cratchit children. Just one of the Cratchit children. No first name. And uh, her only line was, close the door, it's cold outside. Oh. That's not bad. It's more that some people get. Um, Tony Foster, I was in the school production of Wizard of Oz. I was one of the munchkins. I still remember my lines over 40 years later. Lines. As a coroner, I must confer, I thoroughly examined her. And she's not only merely dead, she's really most sincerely dead. Um, Jackie Rasmataz Dix has never been on stage. Uh, Neil Sandwell, first appeared on stage age six, singing a selection of Ken Dodd songs <clears throat> with a tickling stick. Um, Lady V can't remember when she uh, first appeared on stage because she was born in a trunk. What I love about that is the fact that it wasn't just singing one song. It was a selection, a selection of, of Ken, Dodd, Ken Dodd, songs. Dodd songs. I own no one Ken Dodd's Dodd song. Happiness, happiness. I can't think of any others. Little Neil having a little selection box. Um, Rebecca, Rebecca Bromley, Mad- Madame Bromley, um, was always a shepherd. She hated being a shepherd. She said she only got, all the little blonde girls got to be fairies and angels. Because she, because she was tall and brunette, she got to be a shepherd. Aww. And then she was always the boy in country dancing. Do you know, Rebecca, I remember that. I really remember the girls being peeved off. Because um, cause some were angels, which meant they got wings and a, a halo. And then some were just like the other villagers. <laughs> um, Darren Bramley says he doesn't ever remember being on stage, but there is photographic evidence of him aged about four in a pink satin tutu. Eh? Um, Tom Clues played Alfred Doolittle in My Fair Lady um, with the Lookout Theatre Group amongst many other roles um, Coral Daft says the only time she's ever been on stage was on Peggy's Bonquette at the Wigan Slingback uh, Melanie Fairley Melanie was a water carrier shoved at the back of primary school no lines just stood there looking simple did you have a big um, jug of water on your head <laughs> you have a jug of water on your head or were you carrying it here <laughs> Um, Jill Barron, I've been an angel as a little in my church play, which was actually the lead role. Mm. Loads of lo- loads of lines. Um, she says she's also been a skeleton in a cave in Aladdin and an angel. Um, Jed, BG Bear. Uh, Jed says, I remember being in the Cubs and Scouts gang show, aged eight, in a lovely orange and white floral dress which stunk of B.O. and Old Lady. He was singing a medley of Al Jolson songs. Well done. I would go through all that with that that hum. (laughs) And then he says, I much preferred the black and white velvet chiffon gown I wore as Anne Boleyn's lady-in-waiting. He said some classy pieces, hasn't he? (laughs) Filippo Yakimo. I remember going to sing There's a Hole in My Bucket for the local special school, aged about six. I was in the choir, and I was also Widow Twanky, age 10, and apparently I stole the show. Apparently. You know you stole the show, Filippo. Uh, Richard Bobbin Stuffer. I was, the, I was the artful dodger in Oliver. I really wanted to be Oliver, but not being cute or blonde seemed to go against me. Damn you, Gary Bridges, for stealing my part. <laughs> I think the artful dodger is a way better part than Oliver, don't you? Oh, yeah. You don't be stupid Oliver. Um... Shari, a.k.a. Uh, Bubbles. When I was a toddler, I attended a mu- music and movement class at our local town hall. We did a showcase for our families, singing, She Wears Red Feathers and a Hula Hula Skirt. She wears red feathers <laughs> and a hula hula skirt. And there's a worm at the bottom of my garden. It was Shari's first taste at performing. Uh, Captain Brad from Down Under was a chimney sweep for a school play of Mary Poppins. Uh, Chris, a.k.a. Nibbles, was a bat in the school nativity play. I don't remember a bat, do you? In the I think they cram anything in nowadays, don't they? He says, unfortunately, I was left hanging. Uh, Ryan Parrish, the angel Gabriel, an ugly stepsister, then chorus in Annie, Oliver, Ulysses and Smike. Jane Grumet was a daffodil in the school nativity when she was seven. She wore black slip-on plimsolls green tights and a green jumper and a yellow daffodil hat. I cried the whole time through both performances because I only had tights on. I'm still (laughs) traumatised. And Gabby Chassie was in community theatre and was in chorus. So what we've got written down, we've got some... uh... 
Richard Bobbins obviously said his clothes that he wore stank of piss. <laughs> let's go back, let's go back, let's go back so we're not missing them. Uh, Melanie Fairley, our water carrier, has arrived and thinks that Paul's first dog was called Louie. Um, James Brett. <clears throat> Uh, James here. I, like a lot of young gays, appeared in many Amdram shows in South End on Sea. I think Amdram saved my life, James, because being a young gay, I think I was getting bullied at school. I didn't really fit in at school. And then when I went to my Amdram, I went on uh, Saturdays and then I went on like Monday and Tuesday night and then started rehearsing. So basically every night was taken up. I just found my people. I found my I tribe. think a lot of people did, you know, because I think at my school... There was lots of sort of sporty lads in my class. For some reason, they followed me from class to class, you know, through school. Yeah. And there was about eight of them, and it really used to bug me. They used to have a table of six or eight, and they were really loud and really obnoxious, and they used to really piss the rest of the so class drama off. was like a little escape, So for it? some of us who did drama and got a taste of it, we were like getting on the girls, going, hi, ah, you said... Yeah. Oh, the, they, the lads were half pissed off by that. I had also, I had loads of really pretty girlfriends. Not girl girlfriends, mm. but like beards. Um, from my Amdram. Uh, anyway, James continues. Um, in one West Side Story, I played Riff, and I did pretty well until I dropped my dance partner, Claire, and fell on top of her the night her dance teacher was watching the show. Good job we were friends. Oh, I'm sure people loved it. Um, here we go. Martin Garten Spence from Aberdeen. Do you want to read that one out? Uh, I went to Italian primary school with about 30 children. Um, in the entire, in the entire place. school. Uh, we put on a panto every year um, for all the families and local residents. Uh, drama lessons were the rehearsals. Uh, Music lessons for learning the songs. Um, art lessons were for making the sets and props and backdrops. Uh, in Cinderella, I had the glamorous role of a coach driver from the local bus company... We had to drive all the guests to the ball. <laughs> we uh, was upstaged by my friend John, who played one of the ugly sisters, in the campest manner possible. It's a role you can really go to the, go to the roof with. And then he says, whatever we are, all the anti-woke folk think of primary kids in drag. You see, back then, you see, you got a note to take home and say, dress your son as a like this, that or the other, didn't you? None of this going to Asda, buying a whole outfit. So back to Richard Bobbins Duffer, who played the artful Dodger, remember, and wanted to play Oliver. And he says... My cloak stank of piss. <laughs> um, I bet Gary Bridges' costume smelled of roses. <laughs> uh, Gabby Chassie, years ago I was in a musical based on Christmas Carol. During one big production number, I once tripped and fell on my bum. For the rest of the show's uh, run, the number was called The Chassis Two-Step. <laughs> um... Filippo Yakimo also says, let it go. Artful yeah. Dodge is way better than Oliver. Uh, Darren Bramley, I've always fancied being a dame in Panto. Alan, you've done that. Yes, I have been a couple of Panto. I've been a few Panto dames. We oh, Panto together, haven't we? It's a great, great part. Um, I, I don't know, Darren, where you've heard our story, but we were both auditioned for the same Panto. Um, and we sort of met the director at the National, didn't we? Yeah. And sort of... Um, I we think, like demanded our way Yeah, we were really it. cocky. And then I went along and he said um, something about, um, yeah, so you'll play, the, you'll play the dame and then you'll also play a couple of other parts. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 Mikey. No, no, no Mikey. <laughs> What's this about other parts? <laughs> How am I going to come in out of, come out, come in out of a first-class drag outfit to do other parts? <laughs> Nobody does that. I played the dame's sidekick, who was called Tim Bad the Tailor. So he's like buttons, and I would come in and do all the like spitting in the audience in part, and hello, Tim Bad, and all that stuff. But then I also had to play Alibaba because we did have to double up apart from the diva. Because I'd put my foot down. Um, so I played Alibaba. <clears throat> and do you remember who I based my Alibaba on? It was some of EastEnders, wasn't it? One of the, um, what are they called, that family? <laughs> well, they called the Ferreira family. Yeah, you, you, you sort of based it on the dad. I based didn't you? it on the dad, who was quite a bad actor, but I did the whole accent of him, of the dad. Now, now, Haroon, what are you doing? Didn't do like in like that sounded like Indian accent. It was not. It was funnier than that. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Um, Helen says we have good din panto. Helen, the dinner lady. Uh, <laughs> a comment that's unrelated to theatre, but related to Sue Pollard with a little day by day. Starting every time. Day 
Legend has it that Sue Pollard carries party poppers in a handbag and randomly pops them during conversations. I, How extra. I, I don't doubt that, do you? Uh, Linda LaHue loves country dancing and says, bring back the maypole. David Moore was in a gang show, so gang shows are what Cubs put on. Did you, you were a Cub. No, I didn't want a Cub or a Brownie or a... Um, he says, in his gang show, we sung My Girl's a Corker. I still remember every word. We used to sing Ging Gang, Ging Gang, Gooly 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 Watcher, Ging Gang Goo, Ging Gang Goo. I did the, I did the gang shows. I was, mm. a, I was a camp cub. Never made it to, I made it to a seconder, never a sixer. And um, went one week to scouts and then came back to my mum and said, I think we, need, see, we, we, I think we need to find Amdram. We weren't, well, we weren't well off, so if anything needed a uniform, no. I don't think it was... Oh, Mum will know, because Mum was a cub leader. Did you have to pay to be in cubs, Mum? Um, it's not just paying to be cubs. The outfit you wore, that did, well, wasn't cheap, was it? But No, but yeah, I'm sure you could get you could get away with just a little sassy, you know, Meg Morris sort of scarf around your neck with a little knot on the side. In Kingston upon Hull. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, will Venus never been on stage, never found the right part. YouTube oh. is Will's stage. Will! Will, darling, we'll get you on stage we one day. We need to get you on stage. Here we go. Here's Helen's comment. I did pantos with the Hedden Drama Group. Oh. Do you know about that? Drew? Yeah, I know of Hedden. Um, first role was a minstrel in Jack and the Beanstalk. I sang a naff version of Modern Major General. Um, now here upon the village green, you see the local populace. <laughs> Um, a minstrel. It was a minstrel's like... Um, I'm a storyteller. Yeah, that's what I was thinking And of. my stories must be told. In Sweden, I am your ham. Um, I don't know if I've missed some little conversation, but Scream Queen. I started off doing improv as a teen, wanting to get into acting, but quickly went into musicals, doing community theatre, and singing Gilbert and Sullivan in school around 15. Um, BG Bear wishes that his Black Velvet number still fitted him. S.G. Turner, first proper time on stage. I played the Pharaoh in Joseph and the etc. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I was 18, learnt a valuable theatrical lesson. Only wear white underwear under a white costume. Crotch got a good review, though. Well, 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 Jesus. Well, 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 Joseph. Um, S.G. Uh, SG Turner had on stripy boxes underneath his white. I think it's an Elvis outfit the Pharaoh wears. Um... Nibbles and Bubbles says, new information again, Chris. Oh, about the bat, about Chris playing a bat. Pete Potofsky, I was a pirate in Pirates of Penzance. I didn't give back the tights and the hoop earrings because I loved them. And I used to put them on at home and run about the house when mum and dad were at the conservative club. <laughs> Did you put both earrings on? I hope so. And I hope there was some sort of crop top ensemble. I, even if it was just your t-shirt tied up in a knot. Uh, when I was at sixth form, I did, we, I did, we did cabaret. And there's obviously the scene where I'm dragged up in... Alan played the MC, oh, so yeah, the sorry, yeah. Joel Grey part. The Joel Grey part. And obviously there's a scene where I'm in um, corset, heels and everything. And, uh, you know, the teacher said, oh, any, anyone, anyone got a pair of heels to, le to lend Alan? He's a size six or something. This, this like, mousy girl from music department said... He can borrow a pair of mine. No, I don't really wear them. So she brought them in for me and I wore them. And um, I, I really liked them. <laughs> and she had to sort of ask me about a year later, have you got my shoes? Oh. I'd like them back, please. Naughty boy. I thought she might not want them back after I've been chomping around for, for two weeks and then... <laughs> Uh, Hidden Doorway we've not heard from you before Hidden Doorway says evening all I was a camel in the school nativity play when I was about nine I was upset I wanted to be an angel I know there's a lot of wanting to be I the angel I feel sorry for those people that, that were the animals I think a, a camel's a way better outfit than an angel well you, not if you're hidden and crouched over all night um, big up to Amdram says Nibbles and Bubbles uh, Scream Queen I moved back into acting then right back into music been into me in metal bands for decades, still am. Mm. Uh, Gilbert and Sullivan to metal bands. It's quite quite a leap, Squeam Queen. And I, think but I love it. I think a lot of people have met their uh, their bows, haven't they? Doing Amdram. I think so. Yeah, we, yeah. Knew, we, knew, we knew a fair few of them. Amdrams are a hotbed of yeah. um, a hotbed of loving. Great. Um, name a musical, and I'll have done it in Amdram. I did so much when I was in my teenage years. You Annie. Not been in Annie. Not been in Annie, but I saw a production of Annie where um, Sandy got a little bit like 
got a little bit excited Bradgy. and pulled Annie off the front of the stage. God, that's <laughs> a big dog. <laughs> yeah, well, it was like a golden oh, retriever. You mean by the lead? Yeah, pulled like... Not like pulled by teeth. No, she had him on the lead and he jumped off stage and she came flying after him. Um... <laughs> Let's have a look. Uh, Simon B, I have a GCSE in drama. I did the Victoria Wood Checkout Girl sketch as one of my assessments. The uh, which is Victor, the one where Mrs Brinsley. Hello, Gemma. It's Mrs Brinsley. Hello, Hello Gemma. How are you? I got a packet of bacon with no price. Is it streaky? Well, it should wipe off. <laughs> uh, Pete Potovsky's replied as well. Red cabbage. How much? <laughs> um. Let's have a look. Uh, uh, Will Will says uh, they're they're a dame at home. Now the lovely James Witt is in, and James Witt says um, ro- he played Roger Redhat, Mister Bean the farmer in Fantastic Mister Fox, Arabian Prince Benny Salou in The Black Rose, a very glamorous purple and gold outfit made by my mum, and a cheeky prince in The King and I. Some nice shows there, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, let's have a look. Everything jumps jumps suddenly. So I miss I miss some comments because it all skips up. For uh, Sarah says she was uh, a jack in the box in the primary school play. The my, Sarah, my time machine was a jack in the box, but it did, had did Vicky Worrell in did it. Did you have to like pop out? Vicky Worrell in a top hat <coughs> popped out. On a spring. AKA Aussie. Uh, Jason Darcy still got his woggle. From he, would, uh, I'm, he would never let get let, let, let his woggle go. <laughs> Will be Will. You, we had a little impromptu um, wig and sling back on Friday night. So if you don't, you must follow us because you get notified when we go live. And we went live on Friday night. And uh, we've done quite a few since Christmas. Haven't yeah, we? we played Sue Pollard um, <clears throat> entire day by day to a church full of clowns. <laughs> um, Joshua Spencer, closest I've been to stage, I did the sound and lights when I lived in Skegness and I operated the spotlight for the opening number, Good Morning Baltimore, in a local production. Good morning, Baltimore. Um, Archie Diggins sang a song in a regional competition, came fourth, beating the best singer from primary school. Result, the school carol concert in secondary school, and that's it. Um, BG Bear was a cub in White Six, Second Witten. And his dad was the group scout leader. I don't know if my mum's replied about payment for cubs. Night, night, Bethan. Thanks for popping by, love. Night, night, Bethan. Um, what's that reply to, Pete Potofsky? I miss your, I miss your little conversations. Um, it wishes bad so quickly, doesn't it? Pete Potofsky saying it was a poor mousy girl from the music department, but <laughs> I don't know what it refers to. My shoes. Oh, is that what you said? The poor mousy girl. Um, Dale Ibbotson I found out at rehearsals today that I'm playing the front of a camel as well as Daddy Bear in Goldilocks oh <laughs> Daddy Bear mm-hmm. I'd like to see that we outfit. all like a Daddy Bear <laughs> Caroline Ibbotson says Dale and I fell in love as Annie Oakley and Frank Butler in Annie Get Your Gun they did they told us that didn't they when, yes. we, when we met them um Will Venus says, I follow you and have notifications on. They never work from YouTube. Oh, I'm sorry. Do do the follow on Facebook as well, and then maybe notifications will come. And yeah, we, try and, we try and put it on our Instagram story I know a lot of people well. on Facebook don't get notifications, but I don't know whether it's to do with your account or what how what buttons you've clicked. Um, I yeah, it's all, a, it's sure. all a mystery. Lily Law. This is now I've got... i try and get my tongue around this. Um, played Metellus Simba in Julius Caesar and then Cardinal Wolsey in A Man for All Seasons at Ultranum Boys Grammar. Mm-hmm. Both with Fred Weather Talbot doing the sound. And Lily Law says that they weren't they weren't twinky enough for Fred to prey on them. Um, uh, so people are saying that you did have to pay for cubs, that you had subs and you had to pay every week. Um, so Simon B's subs for Cubs was about 50p a week. I would most probably have got him free because mum was... Uh, oh, here we go. <laughs> mum was Bagheera, I think, or Baloo. <laughs> but it must have been pricey, the outfits. I don't think so. Well, I'm I'm third boy in a family, so I had hand-me-downs. Yeah, okay. Which I most probably accessorised. You have little... But you have to sew badges on here. I know that the brown... You have a little Cub outfit. The, brown, about is about a, the brown is in the boys' brigade. We're in... Well, expensive outfits. Uh, Donna Reese has appeared. Hello, dear. Some news. 
She said, how was Jane a dole office clerk on EastEnders? How were you? Donna sounds like that person from um, The Traitors. Donna Reeves? No, the one who used to say on The Traitors. Well, I was in EastEnders yeah. playing a homeless girl called Tracy and I played someone with a, without a womb in Casualty. Um, she said, I was Jane, a dole officer clerk in EastEnders. First job after drama school. Result? I had to interview Robbie, who had just been expelled from school. Oh, wow. We, uh, have, I don't think I ever had an audition for EastEnders, but you've been to the EastEnders casting, didn't doctors, you? Doctors, I too for Doctors. No, you went to EastEnders for Holby or something, didn't you? Doctors. Was that all at Elstree? Yeah. You didn't have to go up to Manchester for no. it? No. Was that the Holby Hospital? <laughs> you know, the old, what they use from the outside bit? Uh, let's have a look. Um, so BG Bear subs were only 5p. Oh, that's But BG's true. old. So you'd have been a 5p, huh? BG and you Well, 5p the back age. then was, was a 5p. <laughs> a shilling, as Simon B says. Mad to have a fan. Uh, sorry, Lucy Lee says, after years of smoking, I've got a voice like Johnny Cash. But she's given up now. Simon B still has his Cubs jumper. Uh, we uh, we said we sound like Petty and Selma, didn't we? Yeah, we're trying to think of people did, who, who yeah, got, got croaky voices. So yeah, Petty and Selma were a little bit like at the moment. Uh, Josh Spencer's my friend got asked to attend an EastEnders audition, but it got stuck in her spam folder. She didn't see it till a oh, few years later. God, you'd kick yourself, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you kick yourself? Uh, now, I had a ropey agent. Before the agent I've got now, I had a pretty crap agent. Um, and I got a commercial. It was a rubbish commercial, commercial, and I was just penciled for it. So if you got penciled for it, it's likely that it could happen or it couldn't. They've penciled most of four actors for the same role, and then they make the decision. Anyway, EastEnders casting director phoned to ask about my availability for a part in EastEnders, a nice part that was about like five weeks filming. My rubbish agent said, oh, he's not available. He's been penciled for a rubbish yeah, commercial. Yeah, she just said he's not available. No like negotiating, no like, no, oh, let, well, he's penciled. No, let's drop the advert. For let him. me give someone a call and we'll to get back to you. Um, and it was a lovely part and it was a part of a, a little virgin who... Um, hired Janine when Janine was a prostitute and slept with her and then became her stalker and like stalked her for a while and anyone who's seen the ABBA movie knows that this guy plays a good stalker so yeah you'd, you'd have been brilliant at it I would have been really good and it could have like opened loads of doors for me anyway um, Martin Gordon Spence on the theme of EastEnders is everyone excited about the fabulous Harriet Thorpe joining as Linda's mum talk about camp even the promo pics are amazing. Now, do you know who Harriet Thorpe is? From um, Brit's Empire. Yeah, and she's in Ab Fab, isn't she? They're taking one over of the, the two. Aren't they taking over the, East, the Queen Vic? The Queen Vic, yeah. Family. Her and Colin Salmon. Yeah. Who was Colin uh, in Doctor in James he's got, Bond, he's got wasn't such he? a lovely voice. And their daughters are, or his daughters, I think they are. One of them's mm. from um, Strictly last year. And yeah, I think, Donna, um, it's a shame, isn't it? And is Vicky Michelle in it? Or going in it? Or being in it? Yeah, Vicky Michelle's going into EastEnders. And Bonnie Langwood was in EastEnders, and Maria Friedman. Bonnie East, Langwood. EastEnders is very camp, isn't it? They've took loads of comedians, haven't they? Well, they're all... I mean, look at... Um, Musical theatre. Look at ITV. They had um, Roy Hudd in um, Corrie, and... And they had Pete... Uh, what's his Maureen face? Maureen Lippman. Uh, uh, Vic Northerner. Reeves. Vic Reeves was in it. What's his face? Peter oh, Kay. Peter Kay. Oh. Seven Network. Loved, loved Harriet Thorpe on uh, Mr. Britus. She had a baby in a cupboard, didn't she? Under the desk. <laughs> yeah, keep a job. Josh, I hope you sack that agent. How useless. Oh, yeah, it was awful. This is the same agent who, um, when my friend had an audition at the Old Witch Theatre, said, I'm not sure what theatre it was, but they mentioned an old witch. <laughs> I think I was interviewed by them one night, and I turned up, and there was like 25 people in a circle looking at me. Oh, yeah, mm. and they, got, they had beef that we were in a relationship. And so I went, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go elsewhere. Piss off. Uh, Vicky Michelle starts in EastEnders tonight as cot as a cotton. I thought you said as cotton, as a cotton. Vicky Michelle, oh Rene. Oh Rene. <laughs> do I play Vicky Michelle in our Hello Hello sketch? You do, yeah. <laughs> uh, dinner. Helen says thanks for the entertainment. I'm a dinner lady again tomorrow. Oh Helen, for, you... for the postponed Mother's Day lunch. We met Helen, we did a radio interview with her, didn't we? And she was absolutely, she was absolutely wonderful. Helen, are you scooping out mash and stuff, or are you just mooching around the tables? I hope you're scooping out and everything. 
And if the kids say no carrots, you just put carrots straight on. They can ignore them. <laughs> you know, it's all a bit different now. School dinners, though, isn't it? Haven't they got those um, trays that you love? That Joel, oh, bought, yeah, Joel, Joel bought, bought me one. I love it. All little compartments. Uh, Coral Daff says, "Good luck, Helen. Avoid the pasta." Um, and you get your pudding at the same time as all your savoury. You get your pudding in a little compartment. Rene, what are you doing with that serving girl in your arms? Um, lots of <laughs> Rene impressions. Um, so it's seven minutes past nine. People are going to leave. People are leaving because we're meant to be on for an hour. So let's play our finale. And then we'll be back for a little... Uh, a little, little chat after. little lock-in while we finish our drinks. Um, but thank you everyone for joining us tonight. We might pop up doing an impromptu one. Um, the little thing scrolling past there is how you can support us. And thank you for all those who have sent... Um, sorry, I swallowed Ooh, an umbrella earlier. Swallowed an umbrella earlier. Uh, thanks for all those who have sent good um, good vibes for our last video. Yeah, the yeah. The pies. Yeah. Thank you all for tips that have come through. It honestly really is um, such support. Um, so we're going to end with um, another little tribute to the lovely late Paul O'Grady, a.k.a. Ms. Lily Savage. Okay, Sarah, Sarah, thank you very much. Say, yeah. like, like to hold it. When I was just a little tot, well, that big, I asked my mother, what would I be? She told me I'd have taught myself. Will I be pretty? Will I be rich? Here's what she said to me. Ah, the fucking hell do I know? I'm not psychic. I'm sat here trying to watch the television and all you've done is witter, witter, witter down my fucking hero. Get away with you skinny bitch for the belly with the kettle. Hey, Sarah, Sarah. What will be, will be. When I grew up, I met that bastard fell in love. I asked my husband what lies ahead. Will there be bailiffs and prison visit once a month? Here's what that fucker my sweetheart said. Kiss me ass, me ass. I get out in that back kitchen now and do my dinner for the part that peroxide be out of yours with a red hot poker. I want liver, onions, mashed potato and a bottle of daddy sauce on this table now. I left him. Oh, I left him in a coma. Oh, fuck me, yes. What will be, will be. I tell you what, a wok's a fabulous weapon because it doesn't dent. <laughs> now I have kiddies of my own. They ask their glamorous mother who looks like Michelle Pfeiffer in a good light what lies ahead. You're all right in there. Will they be pretty? Will they be rich? Here's what their old ma said. Dishes and all you can do is hang round my ankles like a fucking fairy liquid kit. I don't know. Go to the shop and rob some for the tea. Get a stack of coal, 21 bands and a pint of milk. Here, I'll take the plan. Go on, fuck off. And don't go to that top shop because they're robbing bastards and I owe the money for the papers. What will be, will be. <laughs> hey, Sarah, Sarah. Thank you, Lily. Oh, sad, sad news. So we're not, we, we have a short little um, lock in tonight because I'm working. Uh, He's working hard. Working Who hard. have you been talking to this week? Where have they come from? All over the place. India, uh, Qatar, Dubai, Muscat, uh, America, Brazil, Venezuela. I think that's most... Canada, Norway, but it's all day, so I'm, I'm working, I do slots throughout the whole day, and tomorrow's a really busy day with them, but I'll be alright, you know. You will. I'll survive. And they'll be loving you, haven't they? Be loving you. I hope so, I think so. I'm really old, so. Um, so yeah, we have a little lock-in. We've got, um, is there anyone, who, who here is, if anyone, is from Scarbados? Who's like a Scarbados person? Who's a Scarborough person? Let us know. If you if you if you if you're watching now, <laughs> Darren Bramley, I have got a couple of like little white tickets that I can give to nice, uh, nice, polite crew members. 
Like I'm able to give them a little thing to say, well done. And I think something happens to that crew member if I give them this little reward. This is from being a gold flyer with BA. Ask Mrs. B, what did she do with that little thing? Um, did she because if it? it's a great reward, I'll like I'll save it for someone special. But if it's not great, I'll just give it. I'll just hand it over to um, whoever gives me a nice nice time on the flight. Do they get like a, a collection of crystal glasses, like SO? I'm not sure, but it's like you know, you get I get like two or three a year to kind of hand out. Um, but no one's been nice enough to get one yet. Can I be nice to you? No, I get a bit looked down on by people because um, I look scruffy. I think when I fly. what when you're doing business class as well. Yeah. They can't look down on you. The woman they? last time was a bit choppy with me. Was she? <laughs> Darren Bramley says, Mrs. B loves a gold ticket, but she doesn't get anything for it. Oh, is it just like a little moment of cheeky love? Mrs. B, I need to know the secrets of getting upgraded by um, you lovely crew people. Well, you'd only upgraded looking down on you. I used to get, um, when I was gold, I used to get the crew member had to come and like crouch by my chair and say nice things to me, but now I've gone down to silver. They just do that at me. Um, but I have been upgraded a couple of times on flight when my little telly's not worked and I've been moved up. But I had like my normal premium economy food rather why do you than just do, Why did you just break the telly? Food. Yeah, smash it. Keep breaking the telly. Um, Paul McFarlane, I feel like a Scarbados person, but with a faraway look. Um, I'm not sure if anyone's a Scarborough person. Just because we might do a little, uh, we might be doing some a few little live shows in Scarborough, so we're looking for local people to come and try them out and see what what it's like. Um, Darren Bremley, uh, so if you give this gold ticket to to your beautiful crew members, um, you get a thank you email. Um, Rebecca says you need to fly with Rebecca. You'd get exemplary service. I'd love to fly with Rebecca. I'd come and hang out in the little galley. Most probably annoy annoy the crew. Do you remember? Now you wouldn't remember this. Rebecca will remember. When you did long haul, you used to be able to go um, to a little snack box and get crisps or chocolate or little cheeky treats. Like like your mum's tin. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like mum's cupboard. But now it's nothing. You get a couple of uh, shortbread fingers at the back of the plane. Again, another couple of fingers. <laughs> and Mrs B does do the crouchy saying nice things. Um, Jason Rigby will travel to Scarbados. Um, well, when we're doing our big live bingo shows, we're going to give everyone loads of notice for that. But these are some cheeky little things that we're planning. So um, we're, uh, we're, we won't get people to come to them like from, from far away, but you'll learn all about them. Pete Petofsky, I've been to Kidderminster. Does that help? <laughs> no, it's Pete, away. Pete and Cena, it's such a long way for you to come, but you could do it. It's such a... I know, we, we know when we say we're going to do these live events and people say... Or we'll come. We do understand if you do say that. No, we can't. Because, yeah. I mean, would we... Could, well, we can't really travel far because we've got Peggy and we don't drive. So we have to rely on 100,000 yeah. trains. But um, You could fly. Yeah. Pete, Pete and Cena could fly to Leeds, I think, quite easily. No, I don't know. They're not near. You're not near Southampton, are you? Um, now, we need to sort of try and do stuff that's in the middle of the country, don't we? So people can come and... Meet, meet yeah. in the middle. Yeah. Rather than ask people to come all the way up here. Lots of people want to come to Scarbados. We'll make sure um, that we have a uh, that we have lots of lots of notice for our live show. We're not even sure what date it's going to be on yet, but we're definitely going to do it. Um, the bingo. Pete and Cena said they'll get the mega bus. Oh, the mega bus will take forever, but you can get the mega bus up to Leeds and then hop on a train from Leeds to Scarborough. Um. Linda LeHugh says but her cousin lives in Scarborough. Does that does she win? Yes. She could. Linda, you must bring the boys up to Scarborough. Peggy will growl at them and most probably bite them a little bit. She won't bite fun. them. She won't bite. It'll all be it'll all be sound. Uh Darren says, Can we fly from Leeds to Bordeaux? I don't I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Donna Reeves would love to come to the live bingo. Yeah, you must, Donna. Um I uh, Donna Donna studied at speech and drama. I think I think Donna's um. Is Donna, is Donna, the, Donna was the one. That, I think um, we might be able to get Donna up on stage doing a number. Donna was the one that interviewed uh, Robert Jackson, wasn't it? On EastEnders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Donna might be able to do a number on stage. Um, 
I think I saw Dame Carol Robb there popping Dame up. Dame Carol Robb is in. Dame Hello. Carol Robb um, is late to the party, but we've been talking about theatre memories, Dame Carol. And um, we've done quite a lot of theatre with Dame Carol. Robb, yeah, haven't we? Dame Carol has um, acted with Alan a few times in uh, in in theatre plays. Um, let's have a look. Will Venus, I think we'll plane it. Where's the nearest airport? Nearest airport would be Leeds Bradford. Um, and then you have to get a bus from Leeds Bradford to Leeds Station and then a train from Leeds to here. It's most... I don't... Will, are you in Glasgow or Edinburgh? Because you can get a train from Edinburgh straight down to York and then a train direct from York to Scarbados and that might be the easiest route. Oh, Squeam Queen says, I so hope we can get there and see a show of you two when we're in Ju- here in July. We're planning some early uh, July because we've got a few visitors. So it depends when you're here in July, Scream Queen. So we've got to talk to a venue, haven't we, about that? Yeah. See if they're available. Um, Nigel TC's got news here. Yes, he's got a hedgehog house. Go on, read. Oh, it's gone. It's disappeared. Um, just popped out and checked our hedgehog house. Has Neil spotted a hedgehog poop in the garden on Monday? We have a huge hedgehog in there having a dinner. Oh. oh, that's supper to you, Jamie. I was going to say dinner. Um, I, I want a hedgehog in our garden, but we don't have hedgehogs around here. Peggy would go ballistic if a hedgehog came in the garden. My Jack Russell, as grown up, hated hedgehogs and used to try and like bite them when they rolled in a ball. She would hate it. Um, VJ can get the Seaside Express from Sheffield Midland Station. Philippo Yakimo says it's bingo compulsory. It is, yeah, it is unfortunately. Really, yeah. Um, but it's a lot of fun, the bingo. It's quite naughty. Um, uh, Joshua Spencer, Leeds Bradford, my partner works there. They don't have many UK flight routes. Archie Diggins says it's a wee, wee bit too far. Um, so Scream Queen, we're looking at like 2nd of July, so dead early in July. Um, Pete Potosky says getting here sounds like a kidna- kidnap plot. He's exhausted. Oh, it is, honestly. Can you imagine us mo- driving up from Broadstairs? And that's when the trains the trains are on. Yeah. They, they cancel with the feel like you feel. But dead easy. If you're Brighton, Pete, I don't know if you are Brighton. Brighton to Brighton to King's Cross, easy. King's Cross to York, hey, easy. Yeah. York to Scarbados, easy. Three trains. But that means hotels and everything, Tom. No, it doesn't. They're all like, you could do that in a day. Easy. I'll cut, I'll cut British Rail, yeah. I sometimes go from here down to Portsmouth in a day, don't I? To Portsmouth, to Portsmouth, it is a jolly town. Jason Darcy says, 1st of July, he's free. I think we're looking at the 2nd of July, though, but 1st might work. We'll have to ask people. We've got Dave from the States is coming over. I'm not sure what date he's coming. Actually, I can't look on there because that'll take up our tinternet. Bandwidth. Um, Let's talk about what we did this weekend. So... You better not start, let's go out. Hiya folks! Hiya! It's us again, Life of Pi. Here's what we've been buying this week. So we created new characters. Um, Pamela Pi and Mr Pi. Well, you created them, didn't you? Well, um, months ago, about two or three months ago, I wasn't very well. And in a fevered dream, I had this idea of a woman who was doing a sort of YouTube show who was quite aggressive with her crafting so the idea was she, she was making things and then making you know showing them at the camera and we, we, we always laugh at people don't we when they're trying to sort of show stuff we like yeah. people on the camera who show things and, and it go goes like blurred that. and you've got to sort of cover your face for it to come in so we wanted to do that and i just have this idea of this woman being aggressive saying just look at look at what i'm making please and so it sort of bubbled away back there um i think i told you but you're like oh goodness um um, and then we sort of just did it this week, didn't we? Yeah, we had to think of name, like thinking of names for them was quite tricky. Um, until we came up with the, the surname was going to be Pi, and then we liked that, and then we came up with Life of Pi, and then <clears throat> we just had to think of a first name for Alan because we wanted it to be kind of like, like just <laughs> <"Ooh."> <laughs> so Pam Pam Pi um, was what we came up with, and then I'm just called Mister Pi. Anyway, let's carry on with the pies. Hello, it's 
Thanks us again. If you don't know us, I'm Pam Pie and this is Mr Pie. Say hiya. Hiya. And we're on the East, East Yorkshire coast and uh, the shopping we've done this week, you've done, haven't you? I have. I used to do it, but I was under the doctors once with some pills and I went into Fiddle to buy some sausages and I don't know what happened, but I came out with a stepladder hidden in my knickers, didn't I? Bloody typical. Banned for life. So you do the shopping now, don't you, Dal? I do. So let's show you what we've been buying this week. Um, so we're inspired by these people who just go shopping and show you their, like, oldie haul they're, for the week. Honestly, they're, they're doing so well. They get more views than we do, don't Loads they? Loads more views than we do. And they literally just, they just lay the shopping out and that's it. And we've noticed that a few people who do these haul videos when have soft toys behind them. So we wanted to get soft toys in it behind us. You're, these are new teeth for you, aren't they? Yeah, they were the the, the, the Billy Bob range that I love, um, and these were sort of these these are sort of the newest ones, I think. How did you design this look? Um, I, well, I'm not going to say who it is, but it is based on somebody on the internet um, that I, I just took to. Like Divinity was was inspired by a psychic that I saw on TV. Um, and this person here is... Based some... on a YouTuber, yeah. Yeah. Um, she doesn't have the teeth or anything like that, or... Martin Garten Spencer likes the way you say, under the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at that. That's a... <clears throat> thin tur. So Alan chose products, didn't you? Um, I'm, a, I'm a whole lad, and Helen will back me up if, she, if she's gone. But um, a, lot of, um, a lot of the whole dialect is... Uh, Sir, no. no. So I wanted to use things like quick, sir, finter, saxer, saxer. Um, um, and I just wanted to be really low energy because often these women who do YouTube have their husband with them, sort of just sat there doing bullied, like bullied into it. Low energy. <laughs> Lucy thinks um, Mr. Pie has a um, has a certain twinkle to him, like he knows what he's doing. Um, and I said to Jamie, "Oh, I sort of see him a bit, Alan Bennett." And then Jamie sort of came in this, came and sort of suggested all this, this you, younger look. And I thought, "Oh yeah, brilliant." Yeah, because I the first outfit I wore, I just felt like a little old man, and it didn't feel right. And to be honest, my character has turned out younger than I thought she would be. Can you see it? Just do your face, large your face. Oh, it, can you not see it? I don't think that's. I don't think they're looking at it. Look at it. Yeah. Now this one's a winter warmer apparently. Can you get the fruit one? Oh, I thought that was the fruit one. Now we used to like the fizzy vimto, but it made you fart, didn't it? It did. So we just have it with water now in a sippy cup, don't we? We do. Yeah, there you go, darling. It's quite nice hot. Yeah, you can have it hot in a cup. And I sometimes pop it in a bit of gravy. <laughs> Alan doesn't tell me what he's going to say. He just gives me things. We don't tell each other what we're going to say. Um, so basically, I just spend the whole time trying not not to laugh. Um, <laughs> Shari thinks um, Pam Pie looks like her. He doesn't look doesn't like her. Doesn't look anything like you, Shari. Uh, Martin Gott. Shari, Spence, it's not based on you. <laughs> Martin Gott and Spence loves the um, '80s blue eyeshadow, especially yeah. with them specs. And the '80s floral blouse. You like to match your blouse and your eyes, don't you? Yeah. Look at that. Can you see it? I don't think they can see it. Have a look at it. There's curry sauce. Innocent curry sauce. Like chip shop curry sauce. It's like, it's so. like the Chinese curry sauce, isn't it? Like from a chip... Like the traditional ones, the one with the telly in the corner. <laughs> traditional Chinese. Your brother said that once in a Chinese takeaway, yeah. didn't he? He said, well, this is like, it feels like a traditional Chinese because they've got a telly on in the corner. That's That was based on him, that bit. Traditional my, Chinese. Uh, my nan and granddad, bless them, not here anymore, but... Um, when my nan was sort of bad on her legs, she'd send my granddad out shopping, <laughs> and he'd come back, and he'd, you know, when he when she'd oh, oh, well, didn't you get the fruity one? Oh, okay, yeah, he'd yeah. always sort of go a bit off, bit, a bit off, off track, <laughs> perhaps bring the wrong thing back. Like when uh, you do online shopping and they put yeah. a replacement. Oh yeah, and they replace it with something completely different. These chip shops. Now I tell you what, that's lovely on a piece of apple pie, isn't it? You may think it's horrible, but it sounds bloody, bloody, bloody gorgeous. It's lovely, isn't it? We love getting a Chinese takeaway and then saving 50p and using this ourselves on it, so... Yeah, so... Uh, don't drop it. 
Now these are bloody lo lovely, these aren't they? Can you look at it? Can you see it? Sausage casserole! It's not, that's not a whole casserole in there. <laughs> no, you've got to add, what have you got to add? Uh, you've not got to add sausages, peppers, mushrooms, salt, pepper, water, stock. I think there's another bit of me about to corpse coming up. Bloody hell, what the hell is it? I think it's just a bag, bag of powder. <laughs> I just get another curved. <laughs> that was that wasn't meant to be in it, was it? No, we just that was something that we should have added just, it out, but we put I it in. I just started it, coughing and I just went, went with it. We put it in because it made me laugh too much. Can you see it? Can you see? It? I don't think they're looking at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Not at us. Look at it. Can you see it? What the bloody hell is it? It's a Christmas pudding. Christmas bloody pudding. It's March now. If you see the little, the orangutan that's just over my shoulder there is the first ever Christmas present I gave Alan, isn't it? Yeah, so how, how many years is that? Mm, 27. Do you call Mags? Mags the orangutan. I know, I, it was reduced, I got it because it was cheap. Well, budget guys got cheap, but I don't really want one. Where's my Arctic roll? <laughs> that's my favourite line in the entire sketch. Where's my Arctic roll? So you did, you did do a replacement, didn't you? You you, you got the Christmas pudding instead of the Arctic roll. Oh no, I did put this on the list. Look at that. It's naughty. It's ever so naughty. I don't know what it is, but there's something in a fish paste which makes him sexual. Well, it's not you that's waking up at three in the morning, is it? With somebody trying to play with your back door. Here, you have that. Oh. It's less than a pound. That's me up all night this way. <laughs> I had no idea any of that was coming when I gave him the fish part, fish, fish paste. So he did, it just makes me owl. Now these will, were not on the list. You dirty bastard. Look at that. Look at it, you look at it. I don't know what you've got in mind. But I'm not, I'm not having bloody any of it. Dirty bastard. Oh, wow. So they are the pies. They will be back. Um, they'll be back soon. Let me move that down so you can see us a little bit more. Um, S.G. Turner says these two would not be out of place on Dinner Ladies. S.G. Turner, if you've not seen it yet, make sure you watch our Dinner Ladies video because we did create a uh, tribute to Victoria Woods' Dinner Ladies and it's um, it's definitely worth watching. Um, you, yeah, I love that line as well. What was that? Uh, Shari, where you say, you look at it to me. Yeah. Face <laughs> up to what you... I'll, I'll, I'll show you up. Summer 21's noticed that sometimes Alan does make Jamie laugh. All the time, all the time. All right, my loves, we should go because um, I'm up early doors uh, teaching in India tomorrow morning. It's been lovely hanging out with you all. Um, what can we end with? What have um, we got to sort of just say good night and God bless? Do you want... Um, do you want... Um, do you want good music? Do you want Brookside with... Um, Oh, yeah. Julia Brogan. Ice cream's in May. So all we watch this for is for Julia Brogan, um, who gives it far too much compared to everyone else. And look at her outfit, look at her shoes, <laughs> look at the uh, the texture of the dress. Um, she's had her hair done. Yeah, she's wearing like a way, way different outfit from everyone. All right, my loves. Enjoy yourselves this week. Enjoy the rest of the week, and we might see you at the way of the weekend. Who yeah, knows? keep your eyes peeled. Bye for now. Bye, bye And here with their own song, let them know. The cast of Brookside with special guest Ruby Turner.
are you really aware? You think the world is kind of hot, it's kind of hotter down here. Have you heard, have you seen, the kind of loving they need? It isn't much, just enough to let them know we believe. Singing birds, or just a new lamb of play. Funny talks and crazy ways, playing marbles all day. Paper planes and dainty chains come together now and let them know that it's your world. Let them know that. There are two things that I would say. First of all, the beer...